Cape students. You can watch this lesson real time on Television Jamaica, YouTube channel, or One Spot Media. We are also live on Music99 and GoJamaica.com. If you have any questions on today's subject, you can send them into Television Jamaica's Facebook or Instagram at television underscore Jamaica. Today's lesson is on Cape Economics Unit 1, and I am Shanique Francis. The objectives for today's lesson include to explain the concept of demand, explain the concept of supply, explain the concept of equilibrium. We will also look at describing the factors which influence supply and demand. In addition, we will also take a look at the demand curve, the supply curve, and also determining the equilibrium price and quantity. So, economic students will know that demand is a very key term in this subject. Now, it is important that you understand that there are different types of demand. We have desired demand, and we also have effective demand. Do you know the difference between desired demand and effective demand? Okay, so desired demand looks at a desire or just a willingness to acquire a good. It does not necessarily mean that the consumer has the means to acquire the good. So for instance, I would like a new lipstick. Do I have the money to purchase this lipstick? Right, my desire to purchase the, list, the lipstick is called desired demand. If I don't have the cash to purchase it, then it means that I only would wish to acquire the good, but I am not able to afford it. On the other hand, this is the demand that we typically refer to when we're speaking economics. So effective demand refers to the willingness and ability of the consumer to acquire the good or service. So. I want a lipstick, I also have the money to acquire this lipstick. Now, there's also the concept of market demand. And market demand is distinguished from individual demand. Individual demand looks at the demand of different individuals, as the name suggests. So your demand for goods your classmates, you all want to purchase lunch at lunchtime. Your individual demand for a particular brand of orange juice would represent just your specific demand. When all demand are added together, we will have market demand. And market demand is the sum of all individual demand. Now, another very important concept is the law of demand. Now, the law of demand states that all things being equal and you are maybe you are familiar with the latin phrase citerius paribus which means all other things being equal or constant now the law of demand states that all other things being equal or constant as price increases what will happen to quantity demanded do you remember so as price increases the quantity demanded will decrease it's simple. If you would like to purchase something for lunch and you would like to purchase your lunch today and the cost is $100, maybe you could afford to purchase it twice so you could purchase two lunches. But tomorrow you go back to your canteen and guess what? There's an increase in the price. You might not be able to afford two lunches on the second day. And so your quantity demanded will decrease. So it's typical for consumers. Once the price of a good increases, and this is a normal good, your, the quantity that you demand will decrease. Also, once the price of the good decreases, and we don't see this happening too often where the price of goods lower, but it is possible. For instance, if there's a sale, when the price of the good is lower, the quantity demanded will also increase. This means that there is an inverse or indirect relationship between any good or service and the quantity demanded. So the indirect relationship means that the price is going in one direction and the quantity demanded is going in the opposite direction. Now, there are certain factors which affects your demand. So as I mentioned before, your, the price of the good might affect your demand, but also 
you might have other factors that play a role in determining whether or not you purchase a good. So for me, one of the things I first will consider when purchasing a good is definitely the price. So one of the factors that affect or influence demand is price, as you can see. So we know what happens based on the law of demand. Another factor which influences the demand for a good is income. What does income have to do with the demand for a good? Now, if you get a set salary, wage, or your student, so you get your lunch money to go to school, that is your form of income. If your income increases, typically you might tend to purchase more. So an increase in your income would usually mean that you're able to afford more of a good or service once the price remains constant. So if your lunch money today is $200 and you can purchase one patty, and that one patty costs $200, if your lunch money increases the next day to $400, how many patties can you purchase? Two. So income plays a role in determining how much of a good or service you demand. In addition, your income could be less your income could lower. So instead of acquiring more money for lunch, you could actually receive less money for lunch. And this simply means that if your income decreases, typically what happens is that you cut back on the spending. So you don't have as much money today as you did yesterday. So guess what? You're not gonna spend as much. Your demand will also decrease. There are other factors that could affect your demand and one of them is the changes in the price of related goods and I wanted to write this down. Now what do we mean by related goods? Typically related goods are either substitutes and complements. Do you remember what your teacher said about substitutes and complements? Now a substitute is a good that can be used in place of another good. So for example you go to the supermarket you really wanted to purchase butter, there was no butter, or perhaps the price of the butter was too high so you couldn't afford to purchase butter. So instead you decide to purchase margarine because the cost of margarine is less, you can afford to purchase that. So the fact that you can use butter in place of margarine makes it a substitute. Another related good is complements. A complementary good is a good that goes along with another good. Now in this season, one of the most popular good that, has, that we'll think of is bun, right? So the Jamaican Easter bun. Do you remember? Well, of course you remember, right? Most of us have cheese with bun. So cheese can be considered as a complement or a complementary good for a bun. What will happen if the price changes in the example of these related goods. So when we're looking at the substitute, what might happen? So as I mentioned before, you go to the supermarket to purchase butter, but the price is higher than you are accustomed to. You decide not to purchase butter. Instead, you purchase margarine. So the demand for the butter decreases and the demand for the substitute, the margarine will increase. Now, say for instance, the price of butter is actually less, right, than it was before. You might decide to purchase more butter. So the quantity or the demand for margarine will decrease because the price of butter is lower. People say, hey, I can afford butter now because the price is less. I don't have to purchase margarine. So they will make that decision to purchase. Also, advertisements. Some of us do not realize how influential advertisements are. And as you travel to school daily, even while you're at home, watching the television, in between commercials, we see advertisements. We see billboards on the road. We hear advertisements on the radio. Advertisements play a role in influencing consumers. So imagine you're on your way home and maybe you pass a billboard for a certain restaurant and you didn't even realize that you passed it. And then on your way home, before you get there, you suddenly have this urge to eat this food from this restaurant. That's how advertisements work. And there are advertisements on social media also. Now, an 
increase in the budget of a certain business on advertisement could mean that the demand for the good increases. Why? Consumers become more aware that this business exists, that they're offering this good. Consumers might have already been aware, but now because they are constantly seeing this ad, they're like, okay, I need to get this good, I need to get this service. So that's how advertisements work. Another factor that might influence your demand is just your taste and your preference. It's just personal. Whatever you like, whatever your preference is, you will purchase that good or not purchase that good or service. Another very important factor which influences demand is expectations. Now, for expectations, it looks at whether the consumer think that the price of the good will increase or decrease. If you think that the price for your favorite snack is gonna increase tomorrow and you're at the supermarket today, wouldn't you take advantage of the lower price? Definitely. You're gonna buy as much as you can today so that you are not as affected by the price increase. The opposite is true. What if you're at the supermarket today and you hear that you're gonna have a sale tomorrow on your favorite snack? You're not gonna buy the snack today. You're gonna to wait until tomorrow when the price is lower. That's what I would do. We want to look at the demand schedule. Now, the demand schedule, as you know, is a tabular representation which shows the relationship between the price of a good or service and the quantity demanded. We will use the demand schedule to graph our demand curve. Now, you will notice the different points on this graph. So when the price of the good is $10, with $40, the quantity demanded will be 10. When the price of the good is lower and is $35, the quantity demanded will be 20. As the price continues to go down, we're noticing that the quantity demanded is increasing. And this goes along with the law of the demand curve, which says that the relationship between price and quantity demanded is indirect or inverse. And we'll notice also that our demand curve, it slopes downward. So there are factors, as I mentioned before, that would contribute to or influence the demand. Now, these factors could cause a shift of the demand or a movement along the demand curve. It is very important that you note that price is the only factor which causes a movement along the demand curve. Why? Price simply shows that at different levels, the quantity demanded of the good is changing. If price decreases, the quantity demanded increases and vice versa. So notice the different points along the demand curve. A, B, C, D and E are showing movements along the demand curve. Next, we will look at the shift of the demand curve. Now the shift of the demand curve is a change in demand. It is to be distinguished from a change in quantity demanded. A change in quantity demanded is caused by a change in price. A change in demand is influenced only by a non-price factor. In this example, our original demand curve was D and our new demand curve, we're noticing that this demand curve shifts to the left. It is D1. So what happens? There was some factor that contributed to consumers purchasing less good or service. Maybe the consumer's income decreased, maybe their tastes or preferences change, maybe the price of the complement changed, and so they decide to demand less of that good. So this will contribute to the demand curve shifting from D to D1, and this represents a leftward shift. The demand curve could also shift to the right. And this is what happens when demand increases. Now, maybe the consumer has more income and is able to purchase more goods. And this would cause the demand curve to shift to the right. So any factor which contributes to an increase in demand will see the demand curve shifting to the right. So we notice the original demand curve is D and it, then the demand curve shifts outward to D1. So question time, can you explain two factors which would cause the demand curve to shift? And as it relates to the demand curve, 
is the difference, what is the difference between a change in demand and a change in quantity demanded? We'll come back to that at recap time. Next, we're going to look at the concept of supply. Now, supply is the willingness and ability of producers to create goods and services and take them to market. The law of supply, which is similar but opposite, refers to the fact that as price increases, the quantity of goods or services offered will increase. We will go to our break now. Oh, sorry. So we're not taking a break. So the law of supply says that as the price of a good increases, the quantity supplied will increase. The opposite is also true. If the price decreases, the good or service will also decrease. So for a supplier, it's an incentive to know that the price of the good that you're putting on the market is increasing because you're going to make some more money. So these are the factors which influence supply. The price of the good, which we explain in the law of supply, also the cost of production. So for a supplier, once the cost of production is increasing, it means that they are able to supply less. Technology can, can improve or increase the amount that the supplier is able to make available to the market. And this can influence it in a positive way. Government policy, the size of the market, and also the expectations of the supplier are all factors which can contribute to a change in supply. Now, the supply schedule is similar to the demand schedule. So it's a tabular representation showing the relationship between price and quantity supplied. So our supply curve, because of the direct relationship between price and quantity supplied, it slopes upward from left to right. And you will notice on this schedule, as price increases, the supplier is more willing to supply goods. Now, similar to the demand curve, the movement along the supply curve is caused by change in prices. Any other factor that changes, any non-price factor that changes will cause a shift of the supply curve. So that's easy for you to remember if you're comparing it with demand. So the supply curve will shift to the right if supply increases and it will shift to the left if supply decreases. Another question, do you remember the factor which causes a movement along the supply curve? Keep that in mind. The final concept we want to look at today is equilibrium. Now, in economics, equilibrium is a situation in which economic forces, typically supply and demand, are balanced. So when the quantity supplied is equal to the quantity demanded, we refer to that as the equilibrium quantity. Equilibrium price is the price at which the quantity of goods supplied is equal to the quantity of goods demanded. Now, on this graph, we're seeing the supply and demand curve. And we're noticing that, as mentioned before, when price increases, quantity demanded decreases. And when price increases, quantity supplied increases. So we have our demand curve sloping downwards and our supply curve sloping upwards. The equilibrium quantity is 30. This is where the demand for the good is exactly equal to the quantity supplied and the equilibrium price point is $300. So this is your equilibrium point, this is your equilibrium quantity, and this is your equilibrium price. Now, the equilibrium may change if the equilibrium point may change if there is a change in the demand. So, if this is our original supply curve sloping upwards, and always remember to label your axes, 
and this is the original demand curve, then your equilibrium point will be where supply meets demand. If there is a factor which causes a change in supply or demand, then one or the other curve will shift. So if there's a factor which causes a change in demand, the demand curve might, for instance, shift upwards to the right. When there is a rightward shift of the demand curve, there will be a new equilibrium. So whereas your original equilibrium was at point E, your new equilibrium is at E1. You will have a new equilibrium quantity, which is greater, and also a higher equilibrium price. The opposite could also happen. The supply curve could shift inwards or the demand curve could also shift. We want to look at solving an equation for the equilibrium, price and quantity. Now, we should remember how to do this if we have done maths and linear equations. So let us try and work this out. So, if the equation states that quantity demanded is equal to 300 minus 50p, we're solving for p so we can determine the price, or quantity supplied is equal to negative 100 plus 150p. Keep in mind that this equation should help you to solve for the equilibrium price and quantity. And there are different methods that you can go about solving this equation. So your first step is to write the equation such that they are both equal. So 300 minus 50p is equal to negative 100 plus 150p. Do you remember the next step? Okay, so what we will do next is to group like terms. So we can bring the 100, the negative 100 to the other side of the equal sign. So 300 and this negative 100 will become positive. So 300 and we take it to this side of the equal sign, it becomes positive. So it's 300 plus 100 is equal to, and we're gonna take the 50p to the other side of the equal sign because we're grouping like terms. So this negative 50p now becomes positive on the other side. So 50p plus 150p. So 400 is equal to 200p. To solve for p, let us eliminate the 200. So we will divide this side by 200 so that we're left with 1p. So 200 divided by 200 is 1. And we'll also divide this side by 200. So 400 divided by 200 would be equal to 2. So 2 is equal to P or P is 2. This means that the price of the good is $2. So how will we know if this is indeed correct? So using the original equation, supply or demand, we will substitute P for two. Okay, so let's work on this side. So if the quantity demanded is equal to 300 minus 50p, and we have found that p is two, quantity demanded is equal to 300 minus 50 multiplied by two, negative 50, times two or 50 times two is 100. So quantity demanded is equal to 300 minus 100. Quantity demanded is therefore equal to 200. Let us see if the quantity supplied will also give us the same value. Remember, this is equilibrium, they're both supposed to be equal. Quantity supplied is equal to one negative 100 don't forget your symbols, 
plus 150p. Quantity supplied is equal to negative 100 plus 150 times p, and we found out that p is 2. So this is 150 multiplied by 2. So 150 multiplied by 2 is 300. So quantity supplied is equal to negative 100 plus 300. Quantity supplied is therefore equal to 200. So we have proven that quantity supplied and quantity demanded are in fact equal. So the equilibrium quantity is 200 and the equilibrium price is $2. In your spare time, you can look for some similar equations and get some practice to see if you have it correct. So this is what we worked out today and I hope you had the time to write this down. All right, so I want us to go back to something very important. So I had shown you what would happen when the supply curve shifts as it relates to the equilibrium point, equilibrium quantity, and also equilibrium price. I want us to pay attention to this part. And again, please remember to label your axis. Your demand curve slopes downward. Your supply curve slopes upwards. So we looked at what would happen when the demand curve shifts. So the, if the demand curve shifts outward, we have a new equilibrium price. Higher equilibrium price, higher equilibrium quantity. What could happen after this demand curve shifts is also the supply curve could shift. So after a new demand is created, we could also have a new supply. So this would be your first equilibrium we we'll label it as E and the second we'll label as E1. If there's also a shift of the supply curve, say for example, your supply curve shifts outwards, there is an improvement in technology and the producer can supply more of the good or service at each price level. What will happen when the supply curve shifts outward? What will be the new equilibrium point? The new equilibrium point will be along the new demand curve. So your new equilibrium point would be, let's call this one E2. And finally, we want to look at shortages and surplus in a market. When we come back, we'll have a recap and also we'll look at different questions as it relates to the equilibrium. Stay with us.
the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, along with TVJ, present Schools Not Out, CSEC and CAPE Lessons, live Mondays to Fridays from 9 a.m. to 12 noon, with weekly Schools Not Out tutorial sessions on Saturdays from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Schools Not Out, live CSEC and CAPE Lessons, here on TVJ. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. The Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, along with TVJ, present Schools Not Out, CSEC and CAPE Lessons, live Mondays to Fridays from 9 a.m. to 12 noon, with weekly Schools Not Out tutorial sessions on Saturdays from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Schools Not Out, live CSEC and CAPE Lessons, here on TVJ. The Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, along with TVJ, present Schools Not Out, CSEC and CAPE Lessons, live Mondays to Fridays from 9 a.m. to 12 noon, with weekly Schools Not Out tutorial sessions on Saturdays from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Schools Not Out, live CSEC and CAPE Lessons, here on TVJ. The Ministry of Education, you COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick, before, during, and after you prepare food, before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty, and after handling animals or animal waste. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick before during and after you prepare food before eating after toilet use when hands are visibly dirty and after handling animals or animal waste Youth and Information, along with TVJ, present Schools Not Out, CSEC and... <laughs> Welcome back to Schools Not Out. We were discussing supply and demand as well as equilibrium for Cape Economics Unit 1. Now, before we went to the break, we were looking at the shortage and surplus. So I wanted to point out that any point above the equilibrium is referred to as a surplus. And this is so because you'll notice that once we go above the equilibrium point, the quantity supplied is greater than the quantity that's actually demanded. So sometimes we say that there's a glut in the market. Too much goods and services are being provided versus what consumers are actually willing and able to purchase. Any point below the equilibrium is referred to as a shortage. Now, there is a shortage because at lower price points, consumers will definitely demand more. But when consumers are demanding more, suppliers are actually restricting supply. There's no incentive for them to increase the amount that they're supplying. They'll actually do the opposite. So at lower price points, suppliers will supply less. And this is why there's a shortage below the equilibrium the quantity demanded will always be greater than the quantity supplied. And so this area represents a shortage in the market. So let us recap. What did you learn today? And as we recap, I just want to remind you that if you're preparing to do your exams, you can always use your CAPE past paper questions to do some practice or you could use your study guide or textbooks to do some practice questions. 
here are some of our review or recap pointers. Do you remember what d demand is? So, as we mentioned before, demand refers to the willingness and ability of a consumer to purchase a good at a particular price point. This is effective demand. Desired demand is when you are willing to purchase something. However, that good or service might not be available or you might not have the means to acquire it. You might not be able to afford the good. That is desired demand. Typically, we refer to effective demand when we're doing most of the topics or concepts in economics. Next, do you remember what supply is? Do you remember the difference between demand and supply? No. Demand refers to what consumers want. Supply, on the other hand, refers to what suppliers provide for the market. The relationship between demand and quantity, between the price and the quantity demanded is inverse. So remember, when you go somewhere and the price of the good is high, you demand less. There's an inverse relationship. When price is going up, quantity demanded is going down. And for supply, the opposite is true. When the price of a good increases, suppliers want to provide more goods and services so that they can increase the profit they make. So there is a direct relationship between quantity supplied and price. If quantity supplied is going up, price is going up. Or rather, when price is going up, quantity supplied is going up works the same way. Next, we looked at the law of demand and supply, which I just explained. So I hope you're writing down these pointers. Can you explain demand? Can you explain supply? Do you remember what the law of demand states? Do you remember what the law of supply states? How are they similar? How are they different? Now, the fact that demand or rather the relationship between price and quantity demanded has an inverse relationship. This influences the slope of the demand curve. The fact that the price and quantity supplied has a direct relationship or a positive relationship, this also influences the, the slope of the supply curve. So as supply increases it is usually at a higher price point so that is why your supply curve is always upward sloping and your demand curve is usually downward sloping our next question is what we call a movement along the demand curve and there's only one factor that causes a movement along the demand curve do you remember what this factor is sure so what causes the movement along the demand curve is a change in price. So, as the law of demand states, if price increases, quantity supplied decreases. The movement along the demand curve represents a change in quantity demanded. Always make sure you remember to state that price causes not a change in demand, but a change in quantity demanded. On the other hand, when we look at supply, does price have the same effect on the supply curve? Yes, it does. Price causes a movement along the demand curve. So when price increases, what happens on the supply curve? The quantity supply will increase. Price changes cause a change in quantity supplied. What would cause a demand curve to shift? Is it the same thing that would cause a supply curve to shift? Do you remember some of the factors that cause the demand curve to shift? Do you remember the factors that cause the supply curve to shift? So the supply curve and the demand curve will shift only when there is a change in non-price factors. When there's a price change, it causes a movement. When there is a change in any other factor, it causes a shift of the demand curve or a shift of the supply curve. Do you remember an example of a factor that would cause the demand curve to shift? So let us look at two factors 
The first one is income. So when income increases, your demand curve will shift either outwards to the right or inwards to the left. When your income increases, your demand will increase. When your income decreases, your demand will decrease. This is also, as we mentioned before, that it's similar to the supply curve. Non-price factors cause the supply curve to shift. When there is an increase in the cost of production, for instance, the supplier may cut back on supply. This means that the supply curve will shift to the left. They're supplying less goods and services at each price point. If there is an improvement in a factor which allows the supplier to make more goods and services available on the market, then the supply curve will shift because this is a non-price factor and the supply curve will shift outwards to the right. So if there's an improvement in technology, this will cause the supply curve to shift to the right because the supplier is able to provide more goods and services to the market and this is not as a direct result of a change in price. It is as a result of a change in a non-price factor. So again, price causes a change in quantity supplied and a movement along the supply curve. Price causes a change in quantity demand and a movement along the demand curve. Your equilibrium is where quantity supplied and quantity demanded are equal. And your equilibrium price is the price point at which your quantity supplied and quantity demanded are equal. Remember, if there is a shift of the demand curve, then the equilibrium price will change. If there is a shift, whether to the left or to the right for the supply curve, then the equilibrium price and quantity will also change. I hope you remember to send your questions in to Television Jamaica, whether on their Facebook or Instagram page and keep reading your notes, keep preparing for your exams, use your textbooks and pass paper questions. That's all for today for Cape Economics Unit 1. We hope you grasp some points we discuss. You can catch a repeat of today's lesson on JNN Today at 5 p.m. in the School's Not Out Highlights on Saturdays between 1 and 4 p.m. here on TVJ. It also will be on video on demand on One Spot Media. Stay with us. CSEC English A is next. live Mondays to Fridays from 9 a.m. to 12 noon with weekly Schools Not Out tutorial sessions on Saturdays from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Schools Not Out, live CSEC and Cape lessons here on TVJ. The Ministry of Education, Youth and Information along with TVJ present Schools Not Out, CSEC and Cape lessons live Mondays to Fridays